we thought it was about time we introduced you to our van, Jürgen. So welcome to Jürgen. And here he is. So this is where we store the gas and we'd love to have people's opinions on whether we should have one Color gas and one LPG and, and what you do with your motorhomes as well. We've got two uh, six kilogram propane gas and that lasted us for six weeks when we went across to Europe but we're obviously going to be planning to do longer trips across there so if anybody's got any ideas we'd really welcome those in the comments section. So as you can see on this side there's just the propane gas entry point door um, and also we another interesting point to note is that there is only one door on our motorhome so there's no doors on the driver side or the passenger side there's just one at the rear to gain entry and exit to the motorhome as you can see we've got a lot of stuff stored in here but it has to be relatively flat to store so the things that we put in here are things like our our cable for the electric, which at the moment is out, but we keep it in a duck's back container. And by the way, we're not getting paid for anything that we have on this at all. We don't have any sponsors, we don't have anything like that, so we'll just show you what we've got. Um, we've got our, our chairs in here, which are in a bag, so we keep those protected. So they're our outdoor chairs. We've got a couple of these I don't know what you call them, Rob, what it, you call these? Um, it, they're like, I suppose, anti-slip things. It's, yeah, if we get stuck in the mud, we have used them. Yeah, we've used them on a couple of occasions and I think it's well worth having those in the van because when you do get stuck, you do feel a sense of panic. Our friend Mark and Cal very kindly got us one of these. So if you're on a site and you're out for the day, you can reserve your spec. And um, we've got some ramps there as well. Yeah. Shall I pull those out a yeah. bit, Rob, so they yeah. can be seen? So we use these, um, you know, other makes are available, but we use these quite a lot, don't we? Particularly when we're wild camping, when we're on an air or something like that, when, when it's not as level, because it does not make a difference when your, your van's flat. Yeah, so this storage at the rear, although it's got a narrow entry, it's really, really deep. So we can get two full-size chairs in there and a whole host of other things, but we push them right down and underneath. It's a bit of a struggle to get them in and out, but it is very useful storage. Yeah, particularly if anybody else has got an auto that's watching this, if you've got, because we thought we might need something on wheels or something that we could slide out a lot easier so everything comes out because it is a bit of a struggle getting things in and out, but we do manage it. I mean, I'd rather have that than not have it at all. It's really useful. There's a, a spare tire on the back. Yeah, and we want another cover for this, probably with our logo on at some stage. And just up here, this is a, a reversing, reversing camera that we had fitted after we bought it. So that reversing camera actually connects to wirelessly to our Garmin sat-nav. So we, we can either have it in sat-nav mode or reverse camera mode. So that's quite useful. We just have one screen for, for both purposes. I'm just showing you the next hatch that we come to, which is the toilet cassette. So basically I wouldn't look too closely in there. But, but that's our toilet it cassette. Is, it might be worth mentioning the SOG unit. Yeah, we've got a SOG unit. Now, once you... One of the problems that a lot of people have are smells that come from their toilet and also using chemicals and we don't really like using chemicals so the SOG unit means that we don't have to use any of the, the chemicals that um, aren't so great for the environment. So that's ours. So um, stop smells and it means that you can reduce your use of chemicals. So we've got a gas outlet here. And as you can see from the dust inside of it, we've never used it. So this is for a gas barbecue point, if you've got them. Some people do all of their cooking on a barbecue. We can show you the, uh, we've got a cob barbecue, so we don't use gas. So, and, and part of the reason we did that was we, we thought if we did run out of gas, at least we would have a different fuel to be able to cook with. So I love my food. 
So this is where the uh, external port is for connecting your hookup, so your electric hookup. And Rob will probably go into a few more details about this, but we have a few different, we've got um, extensions for this as well, because sometimes you have to park quite far away from where the electric hookup is. And when you're abroad, you need different connectors sometimes as well. Yes, that's a really good point from Peg. We've been to a few sites in the past where our cable, 15 metres, 10 or 15 metres, just isn't long enough. So we bought an extension quite early on and that has proved very useful. Yeah. Don't use it very often, but at least three times I think we've, uh, we've really needed it and it's been uh, really important that we had it. Right. Obviously this is a German make, so you've got to learn a few things and Vasa is water. So that's where our water goes in. And again, I'm sure Rob will talk at length when he gets um, some of his kit out of the, uh, the next little storage that we've got here. We've needed an awful lot of different connectors to connect to different taps when we've been on airs in France and Spain and Portugal as well. So having a, a, a kit of different connectors has really come in handy. The other thing we'll show you inside is you can fill up from this point, but we have got a control panel for those of you that don't have motorhomes. Anybody with a motorhome would have one of these. And you can flick a switch and you can see when you're filling it, whether it's quarter full, half full, three quarters full or full. So that's really helpful. We normally have one of us in um, finding out how full the, uh, the tank is while the other person's filling it. And that's usually Rob's job. <laughs> So this is another side hatch that we've got. This is also accessible from the inside, so it's really handy if we need to get access to anything inside or outside. This is quite a good deep hatch. It goes back, right back here. And also we can get quite a lot going back there under the bench inside. And I'll just show you what we carry. So this is when we're away for quite a while and we need to dry our washing. This actually hangs off one of the windows, so it's really useful. Obviously we've got some tables with us that we carry, something to clean the screens. They've got legs at the back. This is to... We try and clean the front screen on a regular basis before we start out on a journey. So I typically will get water on here and then clean that big window so we've got better visibility. There's another table. In here, um, we just carry some spare bits and pieces like tent pegs and hammers. We've got a windbreak here, which is really good. It's only if we were somewhere for a while would we actually use that because it takes a little more time to put it up. This is an attachment for our awning, which um, is uh, really useful as well. So if it's particularly sunny, we can attach this, slide it along the awning, and it produces a sun barrier, so it's not too hot. And again, in here, we've actually got two lengths of hose. Because, oh, it's gone off. Yeah, it's still recording. So Sorry. what you can do, so in here, we, we carry the two lengths of hose. Now again, we've been in the situation where sometimes the one hose just hasn't been long enough to reach the tap. So we carry this spare piece that we can hook up if we really need it. Probably use that a couple of times at the most, but um, it has been useful on occasion. We also carry in a different array of connectors for different purposes. So these are useful for whenever um, we might need to connect to different types of taps. When we've been in Europe, in all honesty, um, that caters for virtually, this will cater for virtually most of the taps in Europe. Um, there's a the bigger thread and there's a the smaller thread. It's also worth mentioning that it's very easy to forget these after you've filled up with water and leave it on the tap. Um, I've done it and I've noticed many other people have done it too where you turn up at a site and there's already one of these connectors on that almost certainly somebody's left by accident. So uh, try and remember to take that with you or like us you'll just end up buying them every time you forget them. <laughs> in fact my advice to you would be carry more than one of these with you because if you're on a long journey, um, a long trip, and you forget one at some place, 
um, or it breaks or whatever, then you've got a spare one. So um, yeah, these are really valuable. The, the other thing that we carry is this. Now this sometimes is really useful in sites when, you want to, when we want to em empty our grey waste and there's no easy way to get to somewhere with the motorhome. I'll move this over here. So this is our grey waste empty point and as you can see I can very easily empty the grey waste into this and then take it somewhere suitable. So that could be a drain somewhere on site or it could be into the bushes, it depends whatever the site requirements are. But I found this particularly useful um, to make it a lot easier to get rid of grey waste. Okay, just one last thing that might be worth mentioning in here. There's a hatch. Um, now this reveals the, the point at where the water pump connector comes in from the water tank inside. So when we've had to replace the water pump, then you feed the cable through into here and we actually made a change on our European trip so that we can replace the water pump a lot easier in the future. Yeah, so this electrical block, um, we added this because it wasn't there originally. It, it was had some kind of connector that was really difficult um, to, to, to use when we need to change the water pump. But now in future, when it goes again, as it invariably will do, then it's just a simple case of uh, screwing the new water pump in. Some advice we were given on our first trip to Europe was to always have a spare water pump with you. And actually that has paid dividends for us because sure enough, when we were recently in Europe, our water pump broke down after about four weeks. So they can last anything from years to weeks. It's definitely worth carrying a spare one, at least a spare one with you and they're very cheap. Yeah, no tour of the van can be complete without mentioning the windows. So we didn't realise when we bought the van, but when the weather gets warm, these double glazed units steam up and you can't see through them. And that lasts for pretty, well, for months basically. So we struggled through for years and eventually we got them both replaced at great expense. It was something in the region of two and a half thousand pounds per window. So it took us quite a long time to come to terms with doing the job. Should we buy a new van? Should we keep the one we've got? Well, we decided that rather than buy a new van, we would put all the things right on this one that, that we felt needed doing. So this is one complete unit with two double glaze units. This one slides and it's been significantly better for both driver and passenger slash navigator since we've had the windows replaced. We love this windscreen. Uh, it's got a great view but I'd hate to think what it might cost if anything ever happened to it. Okay, one thing that we've not addressed is this step. It's not very securely fastened to the bottom of the vehicle, so we actually bring our own step to use with us. Okay, one addition we've had done is when we're traveling in Europe, it gets so hot that the fridge just really doesn't feel like it's on at all. So we've put this, had this fan fitted. I didn't do it myself. Um, these dual fans against the fins of the fridge at the back. The speed can be controlled from inside the van. Um, does it make a difference? I, c I can't honestly say whether I noticed it made a good a difference or not. We still use it when the temperatures are 30 to 40 degrees, just to see, you know, if it does cool the fridge down at all, then anything is, is helpful. But, um, yeah, we were hopeful it'd be perhaps more efficient than it, it appears to be. So I'm not completely convinced how effective this is. So come on in and meet our Jürgen. So the first thing that I wanted to point out is 
basically from the from the start of coming into it i've got a whole load of stuff here it might look messy to some people it's how i work all of my cooking utensils are right here because my cooker's here so i've got three gas rings and that's one of the reasons why we didn't want to get a gas barbecue as well because we don't have an electric ring on some motorhomes you have one of these is a, an electric burner so you've at least got the option of electric hook up and you've got something to cook on if we run out of gas we can't cook on here so we'd have to use a barbecue kind of a system so this section here at the front is the the kitchen section really so in here in this cupboard i've got all our plates we use melamine plates does also know some people would prefer crockery and we've got bowls as well and a few different tupperware things the other thing we've got is we keep our cups a lot of people worry about how to stop things rattling around in a motorhome so i've actually still kept the cardboard bits that go in between the cups on that cup rack and also in here i don't know if you can show rob inside this cupboard we've got somewhere that keeps our very important wine glasses and other glasses because i don't mind eating off a melamine plate but i don't like drinking my g and t out of anything other than glass we've got a few other bits and pieces in there too so that's that cupboard in here we've got a cupboard that has all things like um kitchen foil bags that we use our cloths so all of that sort of kitchen stuff i keep my uh, washing up liquid up there in this cupboard we've got all of our our knives and forks spoons everything you need for the kitchen so that's all in there and then underneath that we've got a draining board a cling film wrap different bowls that collapse down spare tea towels matches bin bags a variety of, of things like that but all things kind of kitchen related and then under here we've got these are ikea ones so we've got our bin we've got a candle which is a citronella one for our romantic meals that we have and also i've used another bin to put a whole load of cleaning stuff and i've got a tiny little brush and pan there as well for inside one of the things that you didn't realize when you've got a motor home is just how little space you have you've got to really think about how to make the space work for you there's also um a bin that comes with the cu the cupboard but we don't tend to use that much we've, we've got bin liners and we've got things like uh, dishwasher tablets that we sometimes put into the grey waste to try and stop that from smelling um, you will find that your grey waste can smell if you're in a hot country and if you don't empty it regularly as well keep your tea towel there so the next thing to show you this is our fridge it's a three-way fridge so it can go on the battery when we're driving it can go on the electric hookup that it is now because we're on electric hookup or it can go on gas so when we're off grid we can put this on gas so we've got a a little lock on it as well to stop it because a few times one of the things i would say is we have on a number of occasions been driving down the road i've not put the lock on the fridge and all of our food has started careering down towards us so do remember your fridge lock we have a very important for rob ice compartment and then you know we've obviously got an awful lot of alcohol in ours <laughs> And the next thing that I absolutely love about this kitchen is the pull-out cupboard. So you can keep, you know, lots of foodstuffs in here and obviously a bit of gin in the bottom. There is another cupboard up here as well. I tend to keep all the tea, coffee and drinks up there and then I'll keep things like pasta and rice and cereals up at the top there so it's easy access for getting hold of things when you're when you're hungry in the morning the other part of the kitchen that i find really useful come around here rob 
is what I call the big cupboard. So this is the big cupboard and inside here I've got my pots and my pans. I keep our electric kettles in little bags so they to, to protect them when we're moving around and also to reduce any rattling. In this part of the cupboard I tend to put um, food that we've just bought. That's our cafetiere which is I know very posh but we do enjoy a coffee and down at the bottom there's space for a Ramoska which is actually at my son's at the moment um, but we wanted to get a Ramoska so we had um, something that we could cook on electrically if we were on hook up to reduce our um, usage of gas. Okay so uh, this is uh, testing how much fresh water we've got in the tank. So that's showing us that we've got a quarter of a tank. This shows us how much is in the wastewater tank. So it's a quarter full. This shows us um, our habitation battery one way and the uh, car battery or the motorhome battery going the other way. So they all look very well charged. This is to turn the water pump on and off. And this is for the whole van. So when we're going away, we can just turn all the electrics off for the, for the whole van. And that was a bit silly to do that because it's all the lights have gone off and all sorts of things have, all sorts of things have happened there. Do you want to not do that? <laughs> to never turn that off because <laughs> all sorts of things have happened in the van. Yeah. So things closing and uh, lights going on and off and what have you. Um, yeah, so when we're leaving the van, we turn that off. Otherwise you just leave it on. We always leave the water pump on all the time, uh, but we do test the battery and we do test how much fresh water and wastewater we've got. This particular device we never use, but the idea is it connects to your colour gas bottle. There's a, there's a little sleeve and I think it keeps the gas at the right temperature. So if you're in a very cold climate, then somehow it keeps it warm so the gas will still flow. Um, we've never used it. Lastly, we've got a conveniently placed fire extinguisher so in the worst case scenario we're in the kitchen area then we've got access to this. So let's introduce you to our shower room. Right so inside this cupboard uh, and as I said we're not endorsing any products. I mentioned before we've got a SOG unit but we also use some of this as well and I've seen I mean we, we saw it advertised I think on Wandering Bird didn't we she was mentioning this product and one of the things I would say is I, I can honestly say there's less smells in this toilet than there were in our toilet when we lived in a house and um, so that's a natural product and it's environmentally friendly but we put a squidge of that in the loo to just keep it nice the other thing that we have got as well are a few things that we thought were useful um, so when we go abroad we take um, that egg with us which is a washing egg so it's it's full of little beads inside of it so we don't have to add uh, washing powder we just put this in with our wash what we have found though a lot of the laundrettes abroad actually have washing powder involved uh, they have washing powder and conditioner in the cycles when you go and pay in a laundrette and we've got a shed load of pegs and we also have inside there a little washing line so that's that's quite useful as well when you you know you're in a campsite and you can just find a tree to attach it to and then attach it to the motorhome and we've got a little um fold up thing here as well for if we're just doing smalls and we can hang them up in the bathroom and let them dry we've also got um a cupboard there that we don't really use and then this is Rob's side so that's all his stuff surprisingly he does have things in for a shave although he opts not to a lot um, but I quite like him when he's got this uh, five o'clock shadow and on this this is my side so I've got all a variety of different things in there the other thing that I wanted to show you was here this is how we managed to keep everything um, dry so there's a, a shower curtain that pulls across and it goes right I don't know if you can show this Rob but it goes right the way round on a rail there so you can pull the shower curtain round and that, that's your shower as well and there's obviously the uh, the control for it too.
so that's that so the next cupboard that we're going to open is what we call the wardrobe so <laughs> one thing you have to do in a motorhome is to keep everything in a place and uh, we're not very good at that but we do t tend to tidy up you have to tidy up actually um because otherwise you just can't move for stuff so this is a wardrobe now it's got hanging space in it but we also choose to use one side of it. We've got spare blankets. I like a little blankie in the evening if it's getting a bit cold. We've got a hot water bottle for sometimes we'll need to put that in the bed or, you know, if there's a tummy ache or anything like that and spare shoes. Also, we've got other spare bed linen as well because we, and I will show you when I pull the bed down, we tend to take two sets of linen with us, one to wash and one to, to wear, if you like. And we've got all our all our coats on this side as well and it is surprising how much you can fit in this wardrobe underneath the wardrobe we've got another door now this reveals other than a couple of stools that we like to carry with us the boiler so this heats the the water and it also provides us with hot air when it's cold um, conveniently a three pin socket in there which i don't think we've ever used also, I noticed uh, recently the uh, the manual that we've received with the motorhome suggests that we can heat the water using electric. Now, we don't believe we can, so I don't know whether that's been removed because I've never found a way of heating our water with electric. We can only use gas. So gas for the heating, gas for the water. So if anybody knows any way of, of how this might work with uh, electric and how the water might be heated via electric, then let me know because I I've not yet figured it out. One other little point is that this is um, the frost release valve. So uh, when it gets below a certain temperature, the water, the fresh water tank should get emptied. So we, there is actually an issue with this um, and it does leak a little. We, uh, it's something that we're probably gonna get replaced in the future. It's nothing major. So we've lived with it now for a few months uh, quite happily. When we were looking for motorhomes at the beginning, we were given a piece of advice by some other motorhomers and they said, go into lots of different motorhomes and find out what layout works for you. I wanted, well, both of Rob and I wanted something with two long bench seats. We've got one, but we've actually found that we've got two other benches here as well. Now, one of the good things about this is we're quite sociable people, so when we do invite people into the motorhome or when we're staying with friends, we've got a really good social space for a lot of people to sit around, so that, that's a really good thing about our motorhome. We've got storage underneath here is basically everything that you saw outside. So all of the outside storage that Rob showed you before, where we had things like the water hoses, um, tables, all of that, that's all stored underneath here. In here, this is my side again. So I use m most of these and we've got little packing cases. We'll show you these in greater depth in another video that we're gonna do on packing for our big trip abroad. But we use these because it helps us find things. So I know black is for me underwear. Um, I'll just close those down. The other thing I promised to show people as well was a very useful bag that I normally have in there. This is my tiny little very useful bag. And in another video, you met Jenny Jones. Jenny Jones, AKA the bag lady, makes an awful lot of things. And inside here, I don't know if you can see that, all my jewelry fits. So that little bag there contains everything. So if you're thinking of robbing the van, that's the first <laughs> place you want to look to. I must say, I haven't got very many uh, expensive pieces of jewelry. I've just got things that I love. These also, I just want to point these out before we go any further. These are made by a very good friend of ours uh, who's called Lisa Bailey. And she's got Lisa, Lisa B's Craft Hive. Is, um, she makes an awful lot of lovely things and she made these for us and we absolutely adore them. So this is um, another, <laughs> another little thing. We like to have things hanging. This is one made by Jenny Jones as well, AKA the bag lady. And what I'll try and do is I, um, I'm not endorsing their products. I'm just saying they're absolutely gorgeous is we can put a link onto those. Inside this cupboard, we've got lots of uh, 
this is a, a food hamper so if we're going to take a picnic out that keeps everything cool lots of bags in there and our first aid first aid kits are in there and this next cupboard i should really let rob introduce you to this one because this is all the stuff that he uses to fix things it's got different things in here that he uses glues we've got water purifying tablets all of the kind of maintenance kit things that you need um, to have close at hand some things he has got in the, the stowaway outside but the things he needs to ha at hand are here What we haven't said yet is that Jürgen is a year 2000 model so at the time of recording this he's 22 years old five speed manual gearbox it's quite chuggy he's quite chuggy so goes beautifully long at 60 miles an hour we can do 70 but 60 seems a good balance a previous owner has put cruise control on here um, I've never actually used it but it does allow you just to set it at a certain speed and it'll drive along at that speed this is the sat nav that we use I mentioned earlier um, it's, it's a Garmin one for motorhomes so we can set the weight the height the length of the motorhome and in theory it'll take us on roads that are only suitable for our motorhome which I think has worked so far in practice although some of the roads I wouldn't really like to go down but maybe they've been the only options this also doubles up as I mentioned earlier for our rear view camera so uh, we can either have it in sat nav mode or rear view mode this is where I normally sit and I'm normally navigator I know he, he uses the sat nav but I'm the sat nag that goes alongside that um, this is quite bulky at this side here because that's the inside bit of where the gas containers go um, I've got a little glove compartment there as well which we put some cds in but one thing i would say is we don't have enough music in this van and got little bits and pieces that quite often often need to do something particularly when you wake up in the morning you will find that there's a lot of condensation in the van so it's good to have some kind of uh, a cloth there as well i also normally keep a little tiny book at the side here so what you'll find in in this book will be lots of things like um, different things that I want to remember but also costs down of how much toll charges are and things like that so we can just keep keep an eye on the spending. We don't have any cab aircon at all so what we use are these pretty useless fans. So they do provide some amount of comfort if it's under 30 degrees but once it gets over 30 degrees I would say all they do is circulate warm air so another piece of really really expensive kit that I have in the in <laughs> in the cab is this water spray so often what I'll do when we're on a journey and it's hot is I'll spray Rob while he's driving spray me as well and that's what we do to cool down on our recent trip to Europe it was so hot and I, it was around the 40 degree mark on, the, on, on this particular day that I actually took a shower in our van in the car park and then I wet my clothes, put my wet clothes back on and then we carried on driving to our next destination and it was, it was just a welcome relief from the heat. Jenny Jones has done marvels in this van and covered most of the seats. These seats are the original ones that are I don't know whether they were Deriger 22 years ago. Not my taste, but we haven't changed these. And um, at some stage, I wouldn't mind getting a, some seat covers for them. If anybody knows a good way to for us to do that, that's quite economical, I'd be very glad of your comments. But these are our seats. And in a way, we kind of think it's a nod to the way it was beforehand. 
The other thing to say, and I will show you the floor in a minute, is it, it was carpeted when we first came in here. And we actually took the carpet out because we thought we didn't want the carpet. We wanted to have um, the vinyl flooring on there because we thought that would be easier to clean. And we've just got vinyl flooring and some mats down there. What I'm doing now is what we have to do to get the bed. So this, I'll just show you now where we keep, uh, where we go for a kip in our cosy little boby. So we have to bring the chairs down a little bit, not an awful lot. This is what we bring down at night. So I've got to grab hold of the handles here. So there's, there's two clips to this bed as well. So there's a clip here that's already open. I'm just going to show you reducing that one down. And then literally it comes down on struts. And the thing we love about this is we can leave our bed already made up and literally just get straight into our boby. So that's where Rob and I kit. Top tip Tony's asked us to, to mention Crocs because we all love our Crocs. Um, and we use these an awful lot in the van because they're great for just going across uh, wet fields and things like that, but we use these a lot. Anyway, what we do to get into this bed, and this is probably one of the reasons why the hinge went on here, is we literally get up there, get up there, come in. <laughs> so I sleep on this side and Rob sleeps here. Just so you know. So that's where we sleep, but alternatively, you can make a bed up and it makes a huge bed right the way across here as well. So it's literally the whole of this space by dropping the table down and moving all the cushions around. We've only ever done that once with just to try it out, but most of the time we just prefer to have everything easy as in there. I want to show you this as well, apart from lovely Jenny Jones curtains. Oh, I haven't pointed out as well. This is Jenny Jones work as well. She did this curtain here. It was a blue one that looked like we were in a crematorium. So I asked Jenny if she could do us new curtains and she's done these beautiful ones here. Right, so this is um, a light that we use sometimes when we're off grid. So we're not draining the battery down too much. This is a cupboard that we have our, our leisure stuff in. So it's got a collection of different books. Um, board games that we like, walking books that we've got as well. This one is our treat cupboard. Um, so we'd normally have things like, I don't know, biscuits, crisps, things like that in there, but we're just winding down everything on the van, ready to go for our new uh, big adventure, our next big adventure. And this one's Rob's cupboard. So he's got his packing cases again, so he knows which, you know, which are his shorts, which are his tops and things like that. Okay, so uh, in this hatch, we've got the electronics for the solar panel on the roof. And there's also the fuse box for the van. And there's also a bit of additional storage that we utilize as well. In this hatch, we have access to the fresh water tank. So sometimes we actually fill it from here. So we run the hose in here, or we actually bring a bag of water in if it's more convenient and we just pour fresh water straight in here. Also, this is where access to where we can change the water pump. So that can be very useful. And if we need to drain the water as well, there's a plug in here. If I unscrew this, we can drain the water tank down. Okay, a couple of additions that we've put in since we bought the van. This Max Air fan, it's really good. You can have it open even when it's raining outside. While you're driving or while you're stationary, the water won't come in and it just allows fresh air in and out. You can have the fan blowing the air in or out. So it's useful, hot or cold. We really liked the installation of this fan. So a useful thing in the kitchen area as well is this fan. Now we've got two fans in our motorhome. So normally what we'll do is that we'll have this fan drawing air out and have the other 
fan drawing air in so we've got a good circulation of air and it stops any smells and things like that because when you are cooking certain things in a van it really does smell so it's good to have the circulation and get the um, the moisture, the condensation out as well. And I'm not saying that I'm the worst cook in the world. I'm actually all right at cooking, um, but it does help prevent the fire alarm going off by having this vent open. We also put in this second hand aircon unit. It, it's okay. Um, I don't know whether I would recommend getting an aircon unit in all honesty. It only works for the habitation. We don't have aircon while we're driving, so we've just got a couple of uh, very weak fans for that. So when we're stationary and when we're on electric hookup, we can optionally use this. Uh, it does provide a bit of heat as well um, if it's cold, but it's quite noisy to be honest. So we have used it when it's cold, but when it's hot and if it's not too hot, then it does chill the air down a bit. In this cupboard here, we've got the TV. So we can just slide the telly out, nice and easy. And we've got an aerial on the roof, so we can just tune the TV in to, to the local TV aerial stations, and that works very well. Or we've got a DVD here at the back we can put in, or um, sometimes we plug in um, like a fire stick or an LTV stick. Um, if we want to stream something over the internet, like Netflix. Up here is the Wi-Fi that we installed when we bought the van. There's an aerial on the roof, so it just gives us an enhanced reception to get Wi-Fi when we're out and about. You can choose any uh, data to go on there. We pay EE about something like £25 a month, I think it is, and we get unlimited data in the van. So that is just incredible. We can stream as much as we want to from anything like Netflix or Amazon Prime, any films, unlimited. We can do big uploads. We can use our laptops, computers and phones, all without worrying how much data we're using. So at about £25 a month, that is really good value. Yeah, so this system only works for us in the UK. So if anybody's got any good ideas about when going abroad, into Europe, or even further afield, a cost-effective way of getting data, ideally unlimited, but I appreciate that may not be av available, then please let us know in the comments. So this is how we control the heating and the water in the van. We simply go down just to heat the water up, or up if we we'll put that switch up if we want to have heating and water, hot water. This determines the temperature of the water, so we could either have it at 40 degrees or 60 degrees. So if it's relatively mild or warm outside and we want hot water, we'll just put it on 40. But if we're in a very cold place at a cold time of year, we'll knock that up to 60. And this um, is just a thermostat control, so we can control the heating in the van. There's air ducts all around the van to blow out nice warm air. It works very efficiently. So uh, we usually set that around anywhere between 20 and 25, depending how warm we want the van. This shows us the temperature inside and outside the van. So it's really useful. So we can see, that, you know, at the moment, this is saying it's 19 and a half degrees inside, but 12 and a half outside. Now that's not bad. We haven't actually had any heating on here. And uh, it's significantly warmer in here. It feels very pleasant. And this is the remote for the Max Air fan that we told you about. I think it was around three or four hundred pounds to get it fitted um, and as we said before we're really pleased that we did it provides a good stream of fresh air into the van when we most need it we also have a couple of gas detectors in the van this is a carbon monoxide one up here and down there we have another gas detector that can detect a variety of gases um, should there be any leaks in the van and above the bed is the smoke detector that mainly goes off when we're cooking toast so another thing that we've just had installed is um, all of this netting and blinds. So I'll just show you a little bit about this. This is normally where we sit and talk to camera. So what we'll do is we'll put that up and we'll close the curtains over. So we've closed Jenny Jones's curtains over. The other thing you can do with this as well is bring it down and we can unclip at the sides here.
and we can leave that off and we can obviously then open our windows out if we want to and then put the blind down again the fly screen again to stop any flies from getting in <laughs> you flapping peg yeah so then bring this down and there it is so that then you've got loads of ventilation coming in but it stops any of the bugs from getting in and bothering you we use this all powers portable battery uh, with us it's about the size of an old car battery and it's quite heavy but it is quite useful to us when especially when we're off grid and we don't want to run our habitation batteries down on the motorhome so we can power it up either using a solar power that we carry with us. We've got some solar panels. We could attach it to our 12 volt battery while we're driving along and that's very effective at keeping it fully charged up. Or when we're on hookup or in a house, then we just plug it into the normal main supply. So it'll last for a few days and we can recharge our laptops, our phones, our cameras, anything that we've got electrical, it works really well. We've also plugged in things to it like fans, three pin socket fans. Pegs use it to epilate her legs with a normal um, household uh, epilator. So it does have a variety of uses. It's got two three pin sockets on, on the front and on the side it's got three normal USB sockets and one USB seed socket. And it also has a variety of sockets on the other side uh, which enables uh, to enable it to be recharged. I don't know how this compares to the Jackery one, which is probably the most well-known variety of this type. So I can't recommend it over the Jackery or vice versa, but it's just the one that we've got and, and it works very well for us. We hope you've enjoyed the video. We have had our motorhome now for five years, so we've got some experience. We've tried to explain our kit and how we live in Jürgen as we've gone along. If you have any questions or suggestions, please write in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Thank you.